Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and on this episode, we're gonna be looking at a Mercedes C250. We're gonna be replacing the oil filter housing, which is also an oil cooler on this 2012 to 2015 generation. It's super hard to get to. What a crazy design. Let's check it out. On the other generation, the oil cooler and filter housing is in the front. It's quite a bit easier to get to. Well, I'm not sure if I would say easier. They're probably about the same, but this one has quite a bit different method to get there. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. It's a pretty crazy design. If this is your first time here, make sure you're subscribed. All right, so first things first, obviously I'm gonna get this battery disconnected. It has a nice uh, battery disconnect on the passenger side here. There's a 13 millimeter and two 10 millimeters. So we'll just zip those off real quick. And then we'll get back over to the driver's side and everything else is gonna be over here. And I'll just make sure those wires aren't touching the terminal or anything so we don't get power. Now there's maybe a couple of other things I would have included in this job if I was thinking about it. Um, the throttle body, you're gonna have to take that off and there's two gaskets on that so you could easily replace both of those. I was just planning on looking at the intake manifold gasket and judging by how that looked but I'd say if you wanna just go ahead and plan on doing that, those gaskets, I would also just plan on doing that air filter as well if you haven't done that in a little while. This job's supposed to take a good bit over five hours up to a little over six hours. I was able to do this in like four and a half because I did some good research beforehand. Yeah, so nothing crazy when it comes to doing this job. I'm not sure if the gasket is a common failure or if they have the wrong type of antifreeze, um, but we'll definitely take a look at that when I get it out. There were some issues going on with that and you'll have to let me know what you think. Also, check out this ECM placement. It's like the weirdest placement ever. It was on the side of the air filter housing and that part of the air filter housing actually has an open section so the ECM just gets airflow right up against it. So I gave this customer a quote uh, several months ago on doing this repair and I hadn't heard anything from them. So I'm guessing maybe they're running into some more issues with this now. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum up all of the oil, but take a look at the dipstick. I'm not sure if it looked like this when I gave them the initial quote, um, but it definitely, it looks like it has some water in the, in the oil now, some coolant in the oil. So uh, I'm not sure if they noticed some signs of that or not, but I don't think they could have waited any longer to get this done. All right, so let's just hit a little time lapse of this removing the intake manifold here. <clears throat> like I mentioned, uh, some sources say there's eight bolts. There's actually one tucked behind. Looks like there's an intake runner, some sort of intake runner um, solenoid, and behind that's a bolt. And there's actually a bolt that you won't be able to get out until you've got the intake almost all the way out right behind the oil filter. I'm actually gonna use an eight millimeter open socket because I don't have a shallow enough e-torx bit to actually fit in there so i don't recommend doing that i would recommend just coming with a short e-torx but i wasn't planning on that anyways we'll get this adjusted and before i can pull this out of the wires i'm gonna have to get that intake runner solenoid loose as well Now, while it actually takes me a second to get the intake runner off, there's a PCV hose that's on the bottom of the intake manifold that's really hard to figure out how to disconnect. I couldn't find any information about it, and I couldn't figure out that there was actually a button on it. I was feeling all around, and I was sure there was no clasp or button. I just thought it had to be one of those type where you slide the fuel hose disconnects inside of. Um, but I'll show you how to get that off in a second, and again, that runner lines up well so you don't really have to worry about it you just have to always be careful with those because if they break you got to replace the whole intake the mess they've got little plastic pieces in them so just be careful and then uh, there's a lot of wires running over the intake i'll get you a better look here in a second 
and this thing's about ready to come out that last bolt's still in there though so i'm gonna have to be careful just not to lose that Now it wasn't that big of a deal. I could have spent more time looking at that PCV hose, but there was just one wire going over it and that went down to the AC compressor. So I just take a second to disconnect that. And this thing's ready to come out. Let's look at those gaskets and we're still gonna have to get that starter out too. All right, now the fun of getting that starter out, I would actually just recommend jacking it up and taking the pan off the bottom and doing the starter the normal way. It's way faster if you can just get an electric ratchet on there. I did it from the top down here, but I had to take the pan off right after anyways, just to drain the coolant out of that uh, oil filter, oil cooler housing. So totally wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I spent uh, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes on it longer than I could have, uh, but you know, a win's a win, we got that baby out. Now with that starter out of the way, that was the last thing in the way of this oil cooler. I'm gonna take the, oil, uh, the coolant hose off of that and let it drain slowly. Once that stops draining, then I'll bust it loose. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the hose to make it way easier to remove. I'll worry about the clamp behind it after I get that out. But here's where I wanted to ask your opinion about that coolant. It has blue coolant. I know some Mercedes came with blue coolant from the factory, but I know if you mix the blue and the European mix pink coolant together, like the kinds you just buy from the bottles together, then that can cause some problems where if you just put blue in the wrong vehicle, maybe that could cause the gasket to swell. Let me show you the gasket. That's why I'm asking. If somebody knows, is this just how they fail normally? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below.
And look at that, there's the new filter housing. I went ahead and upgraded it to aluminum. In my recent video, I posted, you know, uh, I was talking about replacing some coolant outlets and they were plastic and I just got some OEM plastic ones and everybody was like, yo, get the aluminum ones. They're way better. So now when I can, I'm always looking for these aluminum upgrade replacements. And I think that's gonna be great for this oil filter housing. And it's an oil cooler as well. Weird design. So we'll just run a little time lapse here at the end, putting everything back together. I think this is going to be a good video for this uh, generation of C250s and anything with a similar motor and intake manifold and oil filter, oil cooler design. The customers were uh, sure to make sure that I put some new oil in there, but of course I wasn't even sure if the oil and the coolant was mixed. So as much as I could drain that coolant and oil out, I got those filled back up with brand new fluids that oil is brand new synthetic and we got a new filter in that housing as well be sure to let me know if you have any questions or if i missed anything like i said if you're just going to have to take that starter out anyways might as well do it from the bottom i got it jacked up and put on a jack stand with plenty of room to crawl underneath there and i have a drip pan always underneath my actual uh, tray not not just the fluid catching pan itself i have like a drip tray underneath it that's bigger to catch any sort of drips that spill and some uh, pig mat. I like putting pig mat on there as well to keep everything dry. So as soon as I slid that tray out of there, there wasn't anything on the ground underneath that car other than the oil that had already leaked there. So I cleaned it. So again, if this is your first time here or if you're coming back, make sure you're subscribed if you like the video. And check out this thing in action. I'm just getting this all put back together. Let's get it warmed up and make sure it doesn't have any leaks. I'm not going to lie, putting that hose that came with it back on was pretty hard. And rather than uh, reuse the old spring clamp, which I wasn't sure if it was getting on there all the way, I just went ahead and switched it to a worm gear clamp, clamped that down with a traditional clamp real nice and hard. And that's not going anywhere, so I'm not worried about that leaking, but I was with the traditional clamp. Everything else, though, I was able to reuse all the clips and everything came off perfect and we're able to go back on. <laughs> Thank you.